I have been testing out the new Firebox gas burner along with the titanium diffuser plate for some time now and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on them. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, I want to thank Steve at the Firebox stove for sending me this gas burner along with the titanium diffuser plate. So what we're going to do is go down to my tabletop where I'll give you some close-ups of the gas burner and the titanium diffuser plate. I'll give you the specifications such that I have, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. I'm going to set up the gas burner in each of the Firebox stoves so you can see how that works. I am going to do two demonstrations with the gas burner, one with a diffuser plate and one without, and then we're going to go into the pros and cons. All right, let's get started. All right, just before we take a closer look at the burner, I thought I would share with you what else it came with. Of course, there is the titanium diffuser plate. There are two manuals. One is the main manual for operation of the burner itself, and the second one is for a manual or a set of directions for operating the uh, flame adapter. I'll explain that in a moment. A set of universal pins, and these are extra long. Steve advises that you should cut them to the length you want to fit the stove that you have. And of course, there is a small stuff sack to go with. All right, so let's take a look at the burner itself. As I give you some close-ups on it, I'll point out its key features. And I think one of the first things that you should note is that this is intended to be an alternative to the Trangia gas adapter. Now, Steve has been selling the Trangia gas adapter for some time, and it works in all of his stoves. There is a little bit of uh, challenging putting, fitting the gas uh, adapter or the gas attachment in through the feed ports, but Steve has some good videos showing how to do that. And uh, what the only issue I think people have with it is the cost. It's not inexpensive to buy the Trangia ga gas adapter. It's a good piece of kit but it is quite expensive. I think it's about $79 US on the Firebox stove site. So Steve came up with this alternative at almost half the price and it's well worth looking at. So what makes it similar to the Trangy, of course, is these mounting brackets on either side and these will snap in on a set of pins, the pins I just showed you, and all of the Firebox stove versions at the exact height it would be for the alcohol burner and work as an alternative to alcohol. Now, there's a few other features I want to show you on this as well. And the number one, of course, is the fact that you can use this titanium diffuser plate, which is really quite a unique innovation. I have quite a bit to say about this in a few moments. And the just the short way of demonstrating how it's used is you'll notice there's a small protrusion on the top of the burner and a hole in the center of the diffuser plate and they're intended to match. So it just rests on top like this without being locked down, but it stays where it is and works exactly as it's intended to. Now, another feature of this is something that I have not seen on any other stove and it's quite unique and this is a flame adjuster so what you're looking at it looks like a small hose clamp one of those spring hose clamps you'll take a pair of pliers and you'll squeeze the two protrusions right here I'll demonstrate that in a few moments time and you can raise it to cover off or partially cover off the air intake holes here in the shaft and what that does is it changes the mix of oxygen and butane or isobutane so that it uh well, let's, let's put it this way. It's not as efficient as it is the, without it, but when you change it, it changes it from a high intensity blue flame to a low intensity orange flame. Now, depending on how much you cut off, will determine how efficient it is. And there is some reasons that you may want to do that. We'll talk more about that when I do that demonstration. Okay, now what I think I'll do is just bring in my version, and this is a clone without question, of the Trangia gas adapter. This is made by the company Bulin, and uh, people ask why I purchased this and not the one from Trangia, and the simple reason is cost. I wanted to know if this is something that I would be using in my stoves and maybe then consider buying the true Trangia version. Uh, there's been some challenges for me using the Bulin version in some of the, the Firebox stoves, and it has to do with the width and the way the mounting bracket works. It works in almost all the stoves with the exception of the Nano. At least that's been my experience with it. I could modify it, but I don't think I need to now because 
I have this one, and this works perfectly in the Nano. Now, the major difference between these two burners, other than the shape of the head itself on top, is the fact that the Trangia and this Bulin have a preheat tube or uh, generator, and they've been called by both names, running over the top. The advantage of having that, is, of course, is that this will work better in cold weather than a stove that doesn't have it. And how it works better than a stove that doesn't have it is that you can invert the canister of gas so that it runs on fuel rather than vapors running through the tube. And there are some distinct advantages of that. In fact, I will have a full video on showing how that operates and how you can get the most from your gas canister stoves in cold weather. But in temperatures down to about the freezing mark, at least the free, uh, yes, down to about the freezing mark, this isn't necessary if you're using isobutane or propane. But if you're using pure butane, then you're going to start losing pressure on a stove like this. So that's the one advantage this has. But that's the question you have to answer for yourself. Is it worth twice the cost of this stove to get a true Trangia gas adapter? Quickly, let's go over the specifications for the gas burner. Now, I can give you some of the specifications, but not all of them. Let me explain. So I can give you the weight because I weighed this myself. So the burner itself comes in 3.4 ounces or 97 grams. And the titanium plate only adds 0.6 of an ounce or 18 grams. So not very much, well worth packing along with the burner. As far as the performance specifications, here's where things get a little hazy for me. So the website claims on the link for this burner that it will put out 2100 watts or 6700 BTUs of power. And it further claims that this works in all weather conditions above minus 22 Celsius and that it will boil one liter of water in three to five minutes. Now, honestly, I was a little bit skeptical about that claim that it would work down to that cold a temperature because gas stoves without a preheat preheat tube like the Trangia burner cannot vaporize isobutane or even a winter mix of isobutane and propane down to those temperatures. It has to use the liquid. In other words, the, the canister has to be inverted and it has to have the preheat tube in order for the gas or the liquid fuel to run through. Through. So I went over to the link for the Trangia burner and it looks as if there was a cut and paste from the page of the Trangia burner over to the page that this was listed on. Now that's not a criticism. I think what has happened is since this is so new to the Firebox stove site, is that the information has not caught up to what is actually the, the true values for this stove. However, I did take a, or did a little looking around on the internet to see if I could find stoves that had at least a similar appearance, thinking that maybe they were uh, the basis for this design. And the stove that looks most like this is the uh, Snow Peak Gigapower 2.0. Now, it is an upright canister stove. In other words, it's not a remote canister. It sits on top of a canister of gas. And what looks similar is the shape of the burner. And when I saw it in performance, it has similarities there as well. I can't say that it is the same design. In fact, I suspect there are differences. It's just the closest one I could find. If, in fact, it is exactly the same as far as the design goes, the Gigapower puts out 10,000 BTUs of power, which is significantly more than the Trangia does, but again, it won't work down to minus 22 Celsius. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to start by setting up this burner in each of the firebox stoves that I own, starting with the Gen 2. All right, so as I mentioned, I'll show you the setup for the uh, gas burner in each of the firebox stoves, and I'm going to start with the Gen 2. This is my titanium version and that I'm using here. So the first thing to understand is that these pins are provided for a reason. This will give you the best fit and the most secure fit for the burner itself. However, you can use the fire sticks, but uh, it's, not, it's less than ideal, and I thought I would just take a moment to demonstrate why. So let's start by placing the pins through the top holes intended for the alcohol version of the Trangia. And you'll note that this is running parallel to the damper plate here. 
and the side feed hole. And I'm showing you that for a reason because it's this side feed hole that you want to feed the attachment point through. Now, this does take just a tiny bit of manipulation to get it down there, get it started. The nice thing is it's so easy to get this through as opposed to the one that comes on the transio. It takes a little bit of gymnastics to get it through. Now, as Steve says, it will fit. It does fit but I just want to show you why it's not a good choice. I can see it's already spreading the bars apart because it's less than ideal and they don't really lock in and they, it jumps up. It will jump up on occasion and uh, you just don't want that happening because you wouldn't want it to fall down while it's in active flame. All right, so let's take those two pins out. I'm going to replace the fire sticks with the provided pins from Steve, again, through the top holes. Now, when I snap, when I put this in, it literally snaps in secure. It's secure and it's not falling out. You can move the stove all over the place, turn it upside down, and it will not fall out. And you're ready to attach this to your gas canister stove. And I'll just demonstrate what it looks like to have the diffuser plate on top. And if I was going to use this uh, with a grill, then I'm ready to go. Or, and there's other reasons for using the diffuser plate we'll talk about or I can put my pins in or my fire sticks across the top and then take whatever kettle or pot that you're going to be using and placing it on top. All right, now I'll get my next stove and we'll set up and demonstrate that. All right, now I have my firebox freestyle. Let's start out by placing the pins and it works up pretty much exactly the same way. The damper on the side of the freestyle, the feed hole on the same side, Pins are going to run across in the position that's intended for the alcohol stove. Run the burner down through or the attachment point down through. Just feed that through and snap it into place. You can see it fits in there perfectly. All right, that's the uh, freestyle. Now let's do the nano. All right, so I have my nano set up and I've already got the pins in the cross corner positions you would normally use for when you're using the alcohol burner. So now what I'll do is I'll feed the gas uh, attachment point down through. I like to use the lower of the two ports only if for no special reason. It really doesn't make a difference on this stove, just that it gets it a little further from the heat by, I don't know, a fraction of an inch. So you feed it through, line it up, and snaps into place, as you can see. So it's nice and secure in there and a good distance away from the pot, same distance as it would be for the alcohol burner, and you're ready to go. All right, I have one more firebox stove that I wanna put this in, and that, of course, is the Scout. All right, I have my firebox Scout ready to go, and I have the feed port, the single feed port facing you. So what I'll do now is I'll take the two pins that came with my Scout, and you, of course, could use the pins that come with the burner if you want. Place them through the holes intended for the alcohol burner. All right, so you can see the bars sitting inside. Now feed my gas burner attachment point down through out through the bottom, line things up, and snaps into place. Nice and secure and ready to go. All right, while I have the burner still set up in the Scout, I thought I'd have a discussion around the titanium diffuser plate. So this really is quite unique. Now, titanium diffuser plates or diffuser plates of any material have been around for a little while, and their primary purpose was to diffuse the heat coming out of small gas stoves. The issue was, or is, is that small gas stoves will have a very concentrated flame and will cause a hot spot in the bottom of any pot or pan and placed on top. Now, if all you're doing is boiling water, that's not an issue. But if you're doing any other type of cooking, then there's a tendency to create a hot spot at which will cause burning and sticking. And the concept was if you plate some type of a plate over top of it, then you disperse the heat. The plate itself heats up and the heat is dispersed, dispersed so, so it eliminates or at least reduces the hot spots on the bottom of the pan. Now, that's still the case with this plate and this burner that you can diffuse the heat a little bit so that you don't create hot spots in any one place on the bottom of your pot and pan. 
But the alternative use for this is what's really unique, and that is for grilling. So placed on top like this, a grill on top of that, and whatever you want to grill, be it meat or vegetable, you can do so with less risk of burning. Now you still have to be cautious about how much heat you're putting through, how much uh, gas is, or flame is coming up around at the sides of it. But once you get that adjusted, as you'll see in a demonstration in a few moments time, this does an amazing job of being able to grill things directly over, over a gas stove. That's what I have not seen done elsewhere. All right, I've set up to do a demonstration of the Firebox gas burner, and I'm going to be using the titanium diffuser plate to do a little grilling with. So today I'm using the Scout stove. It's just one of many that I could have chosen, but it's one that I have been doing some testing on recently, and I thought it would be a great one for the demonstration. And of course, the way that this plate works is to put it right on top. There's a little protrusion on top of the burner to hold the plate on and I've got just enough clearance to the top of the stove that I'll be able to put a grill plate on. Now it's set pretty close to the very top. I could have knocked it down one more notch to get a little bit more clearance but uh, this is the first time doing this so we'll just see how this is going to work out. So what I'm not sure of is how I am going to light this with some safety and I think I will try. The trick of course with uh, this stove is it does not have its own piezoelectric lighter so you have to use some type of a barbecue lighter or a match or something to get it lit. So I guess the question is, is do I light it and then put the titanium plate on or do I put the titanium plate on first? My experience is, is that uh, it can be a little hard to put something on this burner once it's lit. So I think I'll put the titanium plate on first and I'm going to use this barbecue lighter to go in through one of the side holes and it is going. You're likely hearing that right now. And uh, I was looking to see if there was going to be any, uh, how much flame coming up around the side. And I think I've got it pretty good. Now, it is cold outside. Well, cold being just above the freezing mark. I am using isobutane fuel. But uh, as the stove warms up, the canister cools off. So I will have to play with the pressure some. Sounds a little intermittent. So what I'm aiming for here is I'm not, I don't want a whole lot of flame coming up around the sides of the titanium plate. A, a little is fine, but I want the plate itself to really heat up, and it will. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up in the daytime, but doing some tests inside the house, this thing will glow red really, really easy. I think I'll put the grate on now to preheat that a little bit. Give it another minute or so, and as I do, uh, really simple. I have a sausage. Just one sausage demonstration for this. It's a raw sausage. It's not a pre-cooked one, so it will have to be cooked completely on top of the burner here. I could have chosen a hamburger. Hamburger would have been fine. A piece of uh, steak or pork or chicken or anything else. I will suggest that something like a hamburger or anything that has a lot of fat content is going to drip down inside. So we're going to see if the sausage does that. It, uh, it may not uh, get that hot, so let's put it on and see where it goes from here. All right, play with the pressure a little bit. I think I may just turn the pressure up. Yeah, right, looks pretty good. So not a lot to watch for a few seconds until things really start to heat up here. And I do have a bit of a breeze happening, but already I can see a little bit of smoke being generated, and uh, which, is, which is fine, of course. So what I'll do is I'll break for a minute, and as this starts to cook, I'll bring it back and show you how it's working. All right, so we've been going for a few minutes here, and it's working really nicely, actually, surprisingly well. Not seeing a lot of charring. Now, what I am seeing with this is a couple of things. The sausage, of course, is longer than the diameter of the diffuser plate. So wherever it hangs over the edges of the diffuser plate, as you, you can see, they're getting a little bit more charred than, say, the rest of it is. And that's, of course, because it's being exposed to the more direct flame from the burner underneath. The challenge I'm finding here is I do have a bit of a crossbreed, even though I'm in a sheltered area is uh, to turn the gas stove 
or the burner itself down low enough that I have very little flame coming up around the sides of the diffuser plate without having it go out because it, it gets down to a point where uh, a breeze could blow it out. So I'm just a little bit of a learning curve and working with the, the breeze and the warmth outside here. Uh, here's what's interesting. Now the sausage is not dripping a whole lot of fat, but it is dripping some. And as the fat drips and hits the diffuser plate, it's just almost igniting immediately and little, it, they look like sparks, just little flare-ups from the fat. You can see some of them burning off of the edges there. I think that's adding to a little bit of char, which is nice. And titanium is such a safe metal to use for cooking with, so you're not releasing anything harmful when you do, other than the, the burning fat itself, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much done. And I thought this would be a good demonstration of using the diffuser plate. I will be using this more often. I'll be doing burgers and pieces of meat and fish and whatever else I can would normally use when I'm out in the woods. But for a first uh, demonstration of using the diffuser plate, I think it's, uh, it's quite an ingenious new adaptation to gas stoves. All right, so I, I have set the burner back up in my Gen 2 fire box so that I could do some demonstrations with it. But before I do that, I just want to talk about the performance in terms of what I was able to get when I was doing my testing. So having the burner set up in the position that's recommended for the alcohol stove from Trangia, then I used this with this little kettle and two cups of water, 500 milliliters, and placed it on top. And the best boil time I could get for this, or for this burner, was four minutes even, consuming eight grams of fuel. Now, I know that doesn't sound exceptionally fast, but here's the reason. I was only running the burner at half open, or approximately half open. And the reason I wasn't running it at full blast is what you'll see in a second. There are some quirks about how this stove operates, and half open was much more efficient than was wide open. I did a test with the with the burner at wide open and the boil time for that was 5 minutes 33 seconds consuming 14 grams of fuel so it was much much less efficient to run it at full open uh, or gas. So now I'm going to reposition the camera. I'm going to ignite the stove to show you what the burn or the flame pattern looks like and I'm going to uh, talk about those quirks that come along with this. All right, so I have dimmed the lights in the room and there's one light left on that I'll turn off as soon as I get the stove lit so that I can show you the flame pattern for the stove. Uh, I, one thing I didn't mention, this of course does not have a built-in piezoelectric lighter, so you are gonna use some type of a lighter or match to reach in and get it lit. And what I can tell you is uh, the gas comes on quite abruptly, so it takes a little bit of practice so that you don't get a huge uh, flame on when you first ignite it, so just make sure sure that you have your flame going and uh, turn the burner on very slowly. So let's do that no, now and I'll apologize for the noise because this is quite a noisy burner. So that's not open very loud at, or very wide at all. Let me just turn the light last light off. Looks like a lot of power. It's fairly well distributed. Watch when I open it right up. Now I'll take it down to its lowest. That's pretty good. You can actually do some simmering with that quite well, and especially if you put the diffuser plate on, if you've got a soup or something in your pot, you don't want it to scorch on the bottom. This is where the heat, you likely want to set the burner. Now I'm going to set the camera up at another angle because there is something specific I want you to see with the operation of this stove. All right, so I've brought the stove down, or the camera down to the level of the stove so you can see directly in on the burner. So I will light it again. I will be turning the light on off one more time, but what I want you to see is what happens when I put this kettle on top. So let's get this lit. Let me turn the light down.
Now, I'm going to turn the burner down just for one second for a couple of reasons. One, I want you to be able to hear what I'm saying. Two, just to allow the stove to warm up so there is no confusion of whether or not what you see is going to only happens with a cold stove or not. But what I want you to look for is the flame pattern when I put the pot on. And I'm saying that because here's what my experience is. So this is what I want you to watch for. There are jets all the way around the burner, but when I put a pot on top of the burner, when it is running at full blast, for some reason, some of the jets start to intermittently cut out. My, my uh, assumption is it has something to do with blocking the airflow. So, and I, and I did try different heights with this burner, but uh, all right, let's just see if it'll do it for me now while it's on camera. So I'll turn the burner up and then I'll put the pot on top. Hopefully you can hear me over the roar. It's working pretty good, but still, what I can see is about one quarter of the jets are on and then off at any given time. And it seems to rotate around the burner, so some of it's on my side as well as on your side. But you can see those intermittent gaps, and that is what I conclude led to the poor performance running this at full tilt. Uh, with the boil times. All right, now I have another demonstration I want to give you. So I mentioned in the beginning that there are a couple of unique features of this stove. Obviously, the fact that you can use this in all of the firebox stoves as a replacement for the Trangia gas adapter. By the way, if I haven't mentioned this, yes, it does fit within the Trangia quick sets as well. So if you have those, you don't have a gas adapter already, and you're looking for uh, an economical alternative, this will work in all of those stove systems as well, or all those cook systems as well. Of course, one of the other things is the titanium diffuser plate and all that it has to offer. And the third thing is that you can adjust the airflow entering in through the holes around the bottom of the burner here so that the fuel to air mixture ratio is altered. And the way to do that and I could show it again. Yeah, there it is. It's showing up. Is this? It's like a little hose clamp, spring hose clamp. And the way to adjust that is to grab the two protrusions with a pair of pliers using my Leatherman Wave. And I'm just going to raise that until it covers a little bit more, maybe, than half or just about half of the whole height. There, that should do it. Maybe a little less than that. Hopefully now I can get in a little closely. You can see that I've kind of half covered the holes. Oh, right there, half covered the holes. So that reduces the amount of oxygen entered in. Now this is something you will have to play with if you want to try this out, because if you cover them completely off, then you're not getting any or almost no oxygen through and you're not gonna get a very clean burn. It'll be very yellow, very smoky. What you want is some oxygen coming through and even then you want to adjust it to make sure that it's still running clean without any smoke or soot. All right, so I'm gonna set this back up in the Gen 2 firebox and we'll take a look at how this works. Okay, so I have the burner set back up in the Gen 2 firebox. I've reduced all but one of the lights in the room here. So I'll light it up and then turn that last light out and you can see what this looks like. So start her up. Turn it down a little bit. Turn that last light off. So I'm not sure why. Let me see if I can bring the camera back at all. Yeah, that's a little bit better. But in the monitor, it still looks as if the flame is quite bluish white. But in reality, the flame is yellow right now. It's like a candle flame, much bigger than a candle flame. But uh, it's, you know, much more yellow, which means a more incomplete burn of the fuel or a less efficient burn of the fuel. But still, Look at this. This is actually quite nice. It's, it's quiet. I can barely hear the hiss of any gas moving through the burner. I have a gentle flame. I can get much better simmers. Let's see if I can turn it down a little bit. You know, that's barely more than what an alcohol burner would put out with the simmer ring on. I can turn it down a little further. So if you intend on doing a lot of simmering, this is the way to go. It does take a second to set up. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to wait till it's cool before you try and do this. I'm gonna turn it up open wide. So what I can see happening off the top is there a little bit of unburnt fuel at the very top. That's not shown well up on camera in the dark. 
but right there in the middle is where it seems to be it working at its best. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing comments. But before I do, I just want to clarify a few things about the demonstrations that I did. I know someone's going to ask this, so let me address it now. And the question will be, why didn't I put the fire sticks across the top of the Gen 2 firebox before I put the, the pot on, as you would normally do? And I, try, I tried it both ways. I tried it without the sticks and with the sticks to see a difference. And I was still getting the same results. There was still that intermittent firing of some of the jets when the stove was was turn, turned up to a full blast. The reason I left it off for this demonstration is I wanted you to have a clear view through to the burner and the fire stick would have obstructed that view. So rest assured, it's not a matter of not having the fire sticks on, the burner still did that. Now, I, this is not a condemnation of this burner. It's just one of the quirks that you should be aware of for whatever reason. And I can't even say that this will be true of all the ones that are shipped out from the firebox stove, but certainly the one I have had has had experienced that as much as every time I've used it I've seen the same thing happening so it's not even a fact that it was new it wasn't the fact that it wasn't running hot or it was running cold I tried all different variations I adjusted it to different heights down into the stove and I still got the same results for whatever reason this burner had intermittent firing when it was running at full tilt and that intermittent firing is what resulted in the less than perf uh, good performance when it came to the boil time. So running it at half ca capacity or just high enough that you don't see that intermittent firing is going to give you a much more effective, much more efficient burn. You'll get faster boil times and more importantly, you're going to get better fuel usage because there was six grams in the difference. So it wasn't quite double the amount of fuel, but it was significantly more when I ran it at full tilt. So you're just better off running at less than full tilt. So that's what I wanted to say about those tests. Now, the, there's a couple of other things I wanted to mention, and one is the universal pins that Steve provides with this. Uh, if you're like me, you're always looking for a backup because you just don't know when you're going to lose one. Well, if you do happen to lose one, don't worry, Steve. Sales replacements, $5 a pair. They're well worth doing that. But if you can't wait for Steve to send you out a new pair, go to the dollar store and buy some skewers. They're up virtually the same size as the pins that Steve includes. I think they're maybe a fraction of a millimeter wider in diameter, and I'll say that for a reason. I tried this with all of the stoves, at least with the Scout and the Gen 2. When I tried it with the Freestyle, this doesn't quite fit through the holes. So the holes in the freestyle intended for the pins are slightly small. Now, if it was an issue for me, it would take like one pass of a little file or stone or something to open those holes up. But at this point, I don't see that as necessary, but it's nice to know that you can use metal skewers like this to replace the pins if you in fact lose them and can't wait for the replacements to arrive. All right, overall, here's my overall impression of this burner. It is a value burner to have as an alternative to the Trangia gas adapter, understanding that it won't have quite the same performance. You won't be using it down to the same cold temperatures as you would your Trangia gas adapter. So if you plan on using this out in really cold weather, and I'm talking exceptionally cold, we've got to be well below freezing before it starts to show up. But if you intend on using really cold temperatures, then you may want to save and spend twice the price virtually to get the Trangia gas adapter and then you'll be assured of performance in those extreme conditions. Other than that, this is going to work for you every time on every type of stove or of firebox stove. As I mentioned, it will also work in the Trangia cook systems as well. I don't know if I mentioned this as well though. One of the things I liked about the flame pattern, as you saw, it's quite wide. It's not a concentrated center mass of flame, is that even without the titanium diffuser, I'm still getting a fairly diffuse flame. In other words, the flame is spread around the bottom of my pot or my pan, so I've got less of a chance of creating a hot spot in the center. Now there's a bit of a downside to that. Unless you turn the flame down and bring the flame closer into the center, 
If you're using a very small pot, like a 750 milliliter titanium pot or one of the Pathfinder pots, then you're going to have flame wastage going up around the outside. The kettle I used is about 15 centimeters in 14, 15 centimeters in diameter so that it spans the entire stove. So it catches all the flame on its bottom. But if I'm using something very small, then I'm going to remember to turn the burner down so the flame stays on the bottom of the pot. We're not that interested in time or how fast things are when we're out there, but we are interested in fuel efficiency and how much fuel it, it actually consumes. So another small tip for the use of this. Okay, that's all I have to offer you. Uh, what I will do is put all the information I've given you in the video description below, as well as links to the firebox stove where you can take another look or purchase another look or purchase this, this burner if you would like. But if you have any comments or any questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will. Make all the difference. Bye for now.